What if you could be Thomas Edison's neighbor? That's right, I'm not kidding. Now, he's not here anymore with us, but you could live right across the street from where he used to live. We're here in Wu Ellen Park, and this is a beautiful home on 2.7 acres. Now, welcome back to the suburbs of New York City, 12 days of Jersey. And I want you to guess the price of this home. Don't forget to put it down in the comments and you could potentially win a really cool hat. Again, one per person per video. Talked about that at the beginning, even before we started doing the uh, video. So definitely check the description below to find out more about that contest or comment contest, however you want to call it. So we're here in Lou Ellen Park, West Orange, New Jersey. And this is the gated community that was home to Thomas Edison, as I said. This particular site, this particular home, I should say, sits on 2.7 acres, which is very rare for this area of New Jersey. Most homes in this location are much smaller lots and much denser neighborhoods. And so let's go inside. I'm going to show you this. It's 1923 and it has this beautiful A-frame in the middle of the home. And you'll see when we get up into there, it's a beautiful area. It could be like a nice study. Um, lots of bedrooms that come off of that room, but really pretty area that you could potentially do. Now, this is really a fixer upper. This is a very vintage home, 1923. So the opportunities here abound. And just look at this beautiful front, front porch as we're approaching. Now I'm gonna turn the camera around so you can see things a little bit better. And I'll turn my microphone around so you can hear me. And look at the cool chimney up top there with the beautiful brickwork. And as I said, Lillian Park is a private gated community. There are HOA fees here. And it, it does center around the historic home of Thomas Edison. And there's a cool carriage house behind this property. Hey, before we jump inside, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a teaser that I'll add at the end of the video. What I realized is this home is actually even more historic than I thought. It was originally built in 1860, according to the photo I found upstairs of an old 1936 news clipping. I'll talk about that more later, but definitely stick around because that's a really interesting person who actually owned and lived in this home. And his son had a lot to do with American architectural history. So definitely stick around to the end of the video when we go outside and see the backyard. I talk about more about that article. So let's jump inside and take the tour. But let's go inside and check out this home. Now it is a little bit darker uh, just because the lights are older and they couldn't turn couldn't turn all the lights on, but here we are in the entry foyer. You just close the door and lock it to make sure it's just us. So look at this cool old light that greets your guests. And right here, right off the bat, you have a grand sort of formal living area with a beautiful marble fireplace and nice bay windows and doors onto the patio or the front porch, I should say. Now, if this is your first visit to the channel and you're looking to learn all about the New Jersey suburbs of New York City, then please consider joining our subs of NYC community. I'm Jeff Massey, a local realtor here in the area. I'm really here to be a resource for you on the ground, especially if you're kidding, considering moving in the next seven days or seven months. Give us a call, shoot us a text, or send us an email so we can help you make an easy, stress-free purchase in the New York City area. And as, as I was saying before, this is our 12 Days of Jersey Challenge. So you can put down in the comments what you think this home is um, listed for. And if you get it right, now no cheating, don't check it up on the MLS, no cheating. If you get it right, you will win a cool hat that we've just started making. All right, so this is a dining room area and it's right off of the main hallway, which we'll check out in a second here. So that was where we came in. And then this is this cool curved stairway that goes up. We'll go up there in a second, but I wanted to show you off the dining room, you also have this ability to go around and there's another little room in the back here. This might've been like an office or a bedroom area. You do have a older bathroom on the side here. Got those cool clawfoot tubs. This home really, like I said, is almost vintage to the date of the construction. There is some, you know, upgrades with electrical and that kind of thing. When I say upgrades, not modern upgrades, but 
upgrades to the standard. Now this would have been probably like a room where they stored like the, the china and that kind of stuff. I'm guessing some uh, something like this. They may have had um, help that lived on the premises. And look at this. This is sort of a newer modern kitchen with this older, this probably would have had like some sort of stove originally. And another area for like a pantry service area with storage for plates and stuff. And in back you have, sorry, one last room here. You have a big storage area here that you could turn into like a modern pantry. Really, like I said, the opportunities are boundless here. This goes out to the backyard. You have a back porch here. We'll show you the backyard separately. This goes down to the basement. I'm not gonna go down there because this is a big house. It would take a long time. And then you have a little bit more storage back here and a little half bath. So let me show you something really cool that we'll see upstairs as well. We'll see the other end, but you do have a little, and the reason why I think there were servants here is because this is a back staircase that goes upstairs. Now we'll, we're going to sneak around, but that goes upstairs. So this would have been like a service quarter that people could have used to take, you know, you've probably seen Downton Abbey, stuff like that. So let's go upstairs. It's cool winding wood staircase. And then this is the really interesting. Oh, here's the other end of that staircase that I was just telling you about. And we'll come back here in a second, but I want to show you the really beautiful space on the top, this beautiful a frame. And it's kind of like a central hub of all the bedrooms up here. You could picture this could be like a cool study area or like a TV hangout room slash library with all these amazing bookcases. And of course you could upgrade it and make it custom to your needs. They obviously added this older, this storage at a different point in time. They don't look original. So let's check out some of the bedrooms in here. You have more than four actually up here. And again, with these fireplaces. So those probably would have been the original heat for the house. This one, they actually added a very modern bathroom to, you'll see very modern, actually something you wouldn't expect to see modern tile. And then you do have a sink. That's probably one of the older sinks. I'm going to turn off light switches as I go. So excuse the noise. Then back to this big room here. Here's another bedroom back here. This one actually has a bathroom that sneaks up on you here behind this door. So we'll see, we'll, this one connects back to that rear service center section that I was saying. So we'll see that again in a second. And then this fourth bedroom over here off the main area. This also has a bathroom. And actually this one connects through to the other room. So this could be an interesting option if you're looking to upgrade. Maybe this becomes a primary suite with like a closet section or a bigger bedroom. And then that could be the bed area. And then this could be your primary bathroom if you redo it. Now there's other options because as you see, as you'll see in a second, the house continues further back above where that kitchen section is downstairs. So now we're back in the main room. Interesting light fixture as well on top there. So let's sneak back here. So this was originally, it's like a sliding door. So this would have been closed. And then this is that bathroom I was saying that sneaks off that other bedroom. And the, of course the servants there. So if we come over here, we have more bedrooms. And this was saying this potentially, this could get reworked as a master primary suite, I should say. Maybe some of these walls come down and you create a really big primary suite. You do have another bathroom here. And then two more rooms back here. This one's more of a storage closet area right now. And then another room in the back here. 
Now we'll peek out the window so you can see sort of the side, start to see the garage carriage house. We'll try and go back there at the end of the tour. So let's get ourselves back out, turn off some lights. All right. I just wanted to show you that really cool A-frame space again. That's what caught my eye when I saw it on the MLS. All right, so let's go out this back door and I'll show you the rear of the property. So now we're outside this 2.7 acre property again in Lou Allen Park, West Orange, New Jersey. Now, here's something interesting. I was about to leave the home and I started, I found this picture of an old newspaper clipping from, I believe, 1936. And it actually said that this home was built in 1860, not 1923. So that's interesting. But even more interesting for all my architecture subscribers that um, know the architecture world, this home here, it's according to this article, I took a picture, I'll show you um, some B-roll of it. The article says that this home was lived in by a gentleman named James McKim. And that James McKim was the father of Charles McKim, who was one of the founder of the famous firm McKim, Mead & White. So I thought that was super interesting as we're walking around checking out the property. Now you can just see how much potential you have back here. Um, I'm not suggesting you would be able to build much more of a house back here, uh, considering this is a historic home, but you can just see you could put in a nice garden here um, next to the carriage house. Beautiful December day here, blue skies. And this is an interesting shape of a property because it kind of is at a uh kind of a cross section of a road area fork in the road area so you do have sort of a triangular shaped lot which is interesting so let's see if we can go inside the carriage house and check that out so i thought that was really cool when i found that that photo upstairs i almost didn't even see it uh, so that's a really interesting piece of history with charles mckim and his father james mckim so here's the carriage house. You have three car garage plus an extra bay here that looks like someone probably added on for a fourth car or just like a storage area. And this abuts the property line, I'm assuming. And again, goes with that sort of yellow board and batten. Let's just look back. The other thing that the article said was this is built in the style of an American Gothic home, hence that super steep a-frame in the middle there with that beautiful sort of study area hangout area in the middle of the bedrooms so let's see if we can go inside the carriage house i'll show you a little bit more all right so we opened up the carriage house you can see there is an ample area here for storage and cars let's go check out the upstairs see what kind of extra space you have maybe this could be like a work studio um, you could really get creative with what you could do up here. Um, I don't know if you could legally make these bedrooms, but definitely like a writer's study area or like home office, maybe make a band music studio up here, something you could do a lot with it. Extra space. I mean, there is an existing kitchen, so maybe you have grounds for making this like a little guest apartment up here and they even have air conditioning already. But as you can see, you definitely want to redo everything. And you do have a bathroom here. As most of you might know, I used to be in the architecture world. So that's why I'm kind of fascinated by these things. Uh, you've probably seen my Frank Lloyd Wright video. Um, obviously know about McKim, Mead and White. Um, and this is just a really cool opportunity to do something unique and um, potentially restore something very historic. Let's just hop back down here. All right, so ignore the uh, 
the storage. So yeah, I thought, I hope you found that interesting. Something unique there in the history. I wish I could have put that at the intro. Maybe I'll put a little blurb at the intro after I've finished filming this now, but um, 2.7 acres, seven full beds, five and a half baths, I believe. Um, let us know what you think down in the comments, what it's listed at. Now, I can't guarantee what it's gonna go for because um, obviously it has a lot of work that needs to be done. So they're, they're asking for best and final bids by the day after this is being filmed. And I won't be posting this for another couple of weeks until the 12 days of Jersey. But it'll be interesting to see what people come up with because this is a very unique opportunity, um, very unique home, just something interesting, as well as that history of um, James McKim and um, you have Thomas Edison living down the street. Just a really cool, uh, interesting piece of New Jersey history and uh, part of New York history with McKim, Mead and White being a big firm in the area, designing a lot of the beautiful public uh, spaces, even though this is more of a descendant situation. But anyway, I'm rambling on. My name is Jeff Massey. Thank you for letting me into your home today. And I hope that together we can help find your next one. In the meantime, we'll see you in the next video.